What's going on everybody and welcome back to my channel Movie Files, Elliot back again with my final recap, breakdown, and review of the series finale of HBO's Scenes from Marriage. Today we're breaking down episode 5 which was a mouthful. <laughs> the title of this episode was titled In the Middle of the Night in a Dark House Somewhere in the World. And I guess ladies and gentlemen, some things never change. We're breaking it all down here in this spoiler discussion but before we dive into it, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel, well, welcome to the community. Consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell that way you can get the alert for when I drop new content if you enjoyed this spoiler discussion well make sure to like and share the review it helps out the channel a lot but also appreciate the support and in those comments once you've seen the fifth episode what do you think about it? Let's talk about the conversations that Mara and Jonathan have and just their, you know, the conversation that we get into this episode about dependency and always being in love with your first love. Let's talk about the series as a whole. What worked for you? What didn't work for you? You know, let's talk about it all. Pros, cons, and everything in between in the comments below. So before we break down and recap this episode, I gotta take the moment, take the time to thank every single one of you all that as soon as these episodes drop, you headed over to my channel, you engaged in the videos, you got personal, which is something that I really appreciate. A lot of you all shared a lot of your personal experiences with, you know, marriages, relationships, what worked, what didn't work, your personal opinion on the on the questions I pose in every review. So it just means a lot to me that you all engage, like the videos, share them, and again, comment. And it really does mean a lot to me. And I wanna thank you all. But also I want to make a quick shout out to all the amazing content creators on this very platform that's been covering this show on a weekly basis as well. There's a lot of great content out there, a lot of great content creators out there, so I want to shout them out as well. But again, from me to you, I appreciate the support, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get into this fifth episode and, and, and talk about it. We're going to break it all down. I'm going to share my thoughts on, obviously, the episode, but at the very end, I'm going to talk about the series as a whole and just kind of talk about future HBO shows that I'll be covering sooner rather than later. So let's break this episode down first and foremost one of the things i noticed no behind the scenes we're, we're, we're i got used to it. i want to see my behind the scenes we'll get we'll talk about it we get one much later in the episode but that was something I'm like oh it's a little bit a change of pace here but let's talk about the actual meat and potatoes of the episode where we start off with seeing jonathan who's attending the funeral of his father who we've seen him talk about in the past his father seemed to be you know not as caring or as loving uh, as as jonathan would have liked him to be but no less he's attending this funeral same time, we have Mara, who's on a lunch with Paulie himself. We finally meet the man that split up the family, uh, 29-year-old, or I guess now time has passed, 30-something-year-old Paulie. And by the way, these are the most characters we've ever seen on the episodes of any episode. There's a lot of characters in this particular episode. But nonetheless, let's talk about this conversation between Paulie and Mara as it appears that, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Paulie was trying to get back with Mara, right? He was he was throwing some little things, asking her to dinner, wanting to start up this like startup business opportunity or what have you. But Mara's in a different spot. She she's she's kind of over the Paulie phase, right? As she's talking about, she she blames, I'm not blames, but she says, you know, Ava. You know, I'm focusing more on Ava, spending more time with Ava, which may be true. But um, there's also another person she's been spending some secret time alone with. But it's in this conversation that when they're making their way back to the car, Paulie tells her that. Are you seeing someone else? Because he he can tell. I mean, you can tell when you know they they spent two years together, I believe, in a relationship, and and they've been through you know quite a few things with her trying to get back to her husband and the family and all that stuff. So he notices that there's something off. He tells her that he wish he never fell in love with her because she seems to be someone that can't commit to anything. Uh, which we'll get into my thoughts on Mara and her struggles with commitment. But moving on to Jonathan's situation as he's talking to his mom in the car after the funeral, and this is a really good conversation I want to have with you as he's talking about not that she's happy that her husband of 50 something years have passed away but Jonathan brings up you know dad wasn't the most loving you didn't love him you weren't attracted to him so it has to be a little bit easier now that dad has passed on and she immediately says no this isn't a good thing right you spend so much time with someone you have I think you said they had five kids including Jonathan so there's obviously history and there's some type of love there it might not be the most romanticized type of love but there's love that she had for her for her husband but the conversation I want to have with you all they talk about staying together because of the kids and for whether you're married or plan on getting married or you're engaged I just want to know how you all feel about that discussion regarding and I know a lot of people that have said the same things that are doing the same things they stay in this unhappy marriage because they want their kids to be happy and just just my personal take and again I want to know yours in the comments I personally think that that's not a good idea, <laughs> in my personal opinion. Uh, and I know that's like a, 
I don't say generational thing, but I know there's a certain generation that like no matter what happens, we're going to stay married forever, <laughs> right? Just because it's like they don't want other people to know that they're getting divorced and they were raised that way and this, that, and the other. But I personally think it's more of a detriment to their children than it is a benefit to the children. Because I just feel like when you grow up in a house, as time goes by, as we know, we were kids at one point. You, you realize things. Uh, daddy's staying out a little later. Mommy's hanging out with her friends more. Um, they don't seem to be as romantic and happy and all. And, and, and as you're getting a teenager, you, you see that they have fallen in love. And I think that just sets up bad habits because once that kid sees that relationship, lives in that house with two people that are clearly out of love and just staying together for the sake of keeping the kids and the family together, that passes on. That kid might do the same thing. They might fall in love with someone that, you know, was lovey and happy and they stay together for many years and as time go by, their love falls apart and they just stayed with the person because they saw that in their own house. So I think that's just my personal belief. If you're unhappy, it sucks. Again, we talked about it many episodes ago. Divorce is not an easy thing to do, a very expensive thing to do, a very heartbreaking thing to do, but I think there's more detrimental things that that occur when you stay in a marriage with someone that you've out of falling out of love with and you're just staying with them for the sake of the family and staying with them for the sake of the kids so i think that's better to split ways but again just my opinion no right or wrong answers but let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below but moving on well 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 Look who's looking in the mirror, checking their makeup, making sure they're looking good, and picking someone up from the airport. It's Mara, and she's picking up no one other than our Jonathan from the airport, and they seem very friendly, ladies and gentlemen, very, very friendly, which we'll talk about more of that friendliness a little bit later, as Jonathan reminds Mara that it's their anniversary coming up, and he has a surprise for her, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't know what the surprise was. I thought that he was going to be like, hey, I got a baby. You want to raise it together? <laughs> but it's... <laughs> Something of that degree as far as the surprise here, but the surprise that he has for her, he drives them to their old house, which is now being used as an Airbnb. He's rented it out, and he wants to spend the night with Mara in their old house. Oh, how, how sentimental, how romantic, Jonathan, this woman that uh, you have been through hell and back with. But hey, we'll get into that here in a second, but let me know how you all felt about that surprise. And when you were watching it, were you just sitting there drinking your coffee, your tea, your wine, just being like, God damn it, Jonathan, let me know your thoughts on when you saw that surprise. But let's move on as, I'm not going to lie, we have spent five weeks in this show, five weeks with these characters, have some great discussions. When they were going through the house, and it might just be me, but I had like this sense of nostalgia where I was like, oh yeah, that was where they fought each other last week. Oh, that's when they had sex on the green couch. Like I was like going through the house like it was like some museum of a sorts, but it just kind of goes to show like I was, I was, I've been really invested in the show, but neither here nor there as they make their way to their house. They make their way to the bed, and uh, again, I mentioned they were very friendly, very handsy on each other, and uh, they seem to be in a really good spot. It seems like they've been doing this pretty regularly, which we find out a little bit here, but again, it's, it's been 17 years they've been married. They're still not divorced, and Jonathan is doing like TED Talks now, seem to be very successful, uh, and also it seems like... Um, They've been doing this, like I said, very frequently. They they actually went to, I guess they went to his childhood home and they, um, you know, hooked up there. So again, this seems to be just a thing that they, this is their, their life. They're just going to be doing these random hookups, checking in with each other, not together, but together in a certain way. So... I guess whatever floats their boat, right? But we see that as they're kind of talking and eating and all this stuff, we see that Jonathan brings up the, are you seeing someone and all this stuff, which she says, no, I'm not seeing anyone. I'm happy. I'm content. I'm happy not being with anyone and, I, and I'm um, alone, which is very surprising to hear that because we all know from the previous episodes, she struggles with being alone, right? She, you know, they talked about it when she was in college and how she kept going back to her boyfriend we see that with obviously what happened with Pauly and she went running back to Jonathan. So it seems like, like, okay, Mary, it's like you're, you know, 40 something years later, you're figuring it out, I guess. But hey, everyone has their own pace. Everyone has their own, you know, uh, life experiences to, you know, some just learn later than others. But it seems like she seems to be happy. But I'm secretly thinking she's keeping that open uh, occupancy as far as relationships for Jonathan to maybe make his way back into the marriage again. That's just my thoughts. We know Mara ain't letting that marriage go. And secretly, I don't think Jonathan is letting this marriage go. And we'll get to that here in a second. But it's in the conversation that they're having that, you know, she mentioned that her mother never thought she would be married. And she kind of 
in a way, wanted to prove her mom wrong. And, and I don't think that was the main reason she married Jonathan. But I think it had a little bit of motivation that she wanted to marry someone to prove her mother wrong. But, you know, this is her first time being alone since she was 15. So, I mean, again, if we're doing the math... Mira, I think in this episode, she's probably 45, 46. So, I mean, your first time being alone since 15, that's a lot of relationships. Not a lot of relationships. That's a long time to finally have time for yourself. Because obviously, when you're 15 to you're in your 40s, you, you had no time to discover who you are as a person. So, it's almost like she's having this kind of open-mindedness of like, I want to learn who I am. I want to spend time with my daughter and then, you know, have my... um you know, cake and eat it too with uh, having these little sexual escapades and affairs with Jonathan. But nonetheless, it was kind of interesting to hear that this is her first time being alone for a very long time. She seems to be pretty happy with this situation. But long story short, we see that they're having sex. Uh, Jonathan, he, he stops the sexual engagement that's going on because he says it just kind of feels weird, which we'll get to Jonathan and being extremely disrespectful. Uh, but we get a chance to, again, you, you can tell that there's something off. There's something going on and we see Mare makes her way up to the infamous attic that caused all of the, the, the fights. That, that was, if you guys remember, episode two is when the fight started is because of that damn attic. So we she makes her way up to that attic. But Jonathan, he gets a call and it's from a, a young lady by the name of Jane and I'm like who the hell is Jane who, who, who's this on the phone Jonathan I'm thinking is, is it the surrogate mom that he was talking about last week and you know we hear Jane and asking about his whereabouts he's lying you number one I uh, hate liars but uh, we see Jane wants to FaceTime Jonathan and she does and uh, we see Jane you know looks like a nice nice you know woman and there's a baby there by the name of Ethan and um, they're in a relationship uh, and we later find out they're in a marriage. So I guess Jonathan has taken a page out of Mara's book and wants to be a cheater. He wants to be, uh, a, a, you know, sleeping around and getting around like my man Tupac said. Jonathan gets around, uh, which we'll, we'll talk about here in a second. So I'm just like, wow, wow, Jonathan, really? You, you, you're the same guy that said you want to take your life, you wish your wife died, you, you don't want your daughter to be here long uh, anymore because, you know, your wife had an affair on you, you guys broke up, but then you're doing this to your current wife that just had your child? Ah, man, John, I, I don't know, guys. The pendulum might have switched as far as, like, the most effed up person on the show. I think the award might go to Jonathan at this point in the episode. Let me know what you all thought when you found out that this man had a baby and is married to another woman and having an affair with the woman that had her affair on him, his ex-wife that he's still married with. Toxicity? Much? Uh, but let's move on. As Jane says, I love you, I love you too. And like I said, they're married, as we'll find out later on again. These men, is, they're having an affair together, which he makes his way up, which, by the way, the attic was pretty dope, uh, which, you know, Jonathan, he could have did that to his own attic when they were married. But Mara, you know, they're happy, they're laughing. She, know, she knows about Jane and Ethan. She says, oh, how are they doing and whatnot. And again, she, you know, the conversation gets had and she says, guilt. He has the guilt. And listen, again, like I said, the most effed up person, I'm starting to give that award to Jonathan because he goes into, he's over his obsession of being a goody good to, right? A good person, as he says. And he doesn't think like he needs to be that person anymore. He just wants to live his best life, which... I understand what he's saying, but in my personal opinion, that doesn't mean that you can cheat on your wife. Like, is she okay with this? She clearly doesn't know about this. So just the fact that you are okay with being an, an asshole and being a cheater and being, you know, someone that lies, if, you, if you're cool with that, that's fine. But you have another woman or a person, a partner, a life partner that you married and had a kid with, that's not okay. At least in my opinion. Again, to each his own, but I think that's completely disrespectful for what John is doing, especially after his experiences. It's like, you would think he would learn to to not be a cheater after what happened to him but hey again whatever floats his boat but I, I I don't respect that decision I think it's very selfish of not only Jonathan but also Mare she's sleeping around with her ex-husband or current husband that is now married I, I guess I, I guess correct me if I'm wrong they're still married right they didn't get the divorce they signed the papers last week, so I guess they did get divorced. So just scratch everything I said about them being married. They are officially divorced, so she's sleeping around with her ex-husband who is sleeping with her. Again, extremely selfish individuals. But let's get back to the review as we learn that Jonathan has had 
multiple affairs with multiple women. Uh, again, this entanglement. Uh, like I said, the Tupac, he gets around. This man is just sleeping around. He's just he's cool with like being a good guy at home and being a freaking playboy outside of the home. Uh, again, Jonathan has taken a page out of Mayor's book. Uh, as Jonathan tells Mayor that he, he didn't want to marry Jane, but they already lived together, so why not? Again, another asshole-ish type of mindset by Jonathan. He's like, oh, we might as well just, uh, you know, make it official. Uh, and, and again, he talks about they, they haven't been having sex. She's a, you know, she's Jewish just like him, so they have that type of uh, compatibility, that commonality between the two, and he's he's content. He's content with this situation. Again, she won't be, I would assume that she won't be happy that she, he's her husband sleeping around, but he's content with the situation at hand. Again, very selfish uh, uh, moment there, but again, um, we get into the conversation about Mara says, you know, uh, first loves. They talk about he'll, he'll never, he thinks he'll never be able to find the love that he had for Mary, which I think is true. You you can't love someone, you know, your first love, second love, whatever love, however love, you know, how many people you love in your life. You can't love people the same way you love an individual. It's individuality, right? You you love someone for who they are. So you can't love Mary the same way you love Jane because they're two different people with two different situations. But that brings me to my question. Have And, and again, this is a very personal question, but how do you all feel about first loves. Uh, and again, if you're married, hopefully your significant other doesn't read the comments, but have you ever, do you have like this, this, this like feeling, this hole that you, 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 you should have stayed with the first person you fell in love with? Are you happy it didn't work out? I'm just kind of curious on how you all feel about first loves. Again, you don't have to share it with me, but if you want to, let's talk about it in the comments below. But Again, um, wrapping things up as we get the confirmation that it's been like four years in total since we've seen, like since episode two, and both of them still haven't gotten over their past love and all that different stuff. And then that leads into ultimately them having sex, uh, which was, you know, pretty, pretty, again, these are actors, but man, uh, Oscar Isaac and Jessica Chastain, they must be really good friends. And, and their significant others must be really good friends too, because they, they I mean, they're butt ass naked. Let's, let's just keep it real. They're, they're completely naked. But the thing that I noticed in this scene is we see that Jonathan, he, he's now having sex with Mara. And this is more, this has more meaning than the, than the meaningless sex that they had last week. But again, it was pretty, uh, you know, pretty hot and steamy, you know, to say the least. But we see Jonathan wakes up from this, like, nightmare, as, as he describes a nightmare, that he couldn't get to Mara and, and Ava. And I think there's more of, like, a, a deeper meaning and a deepened a deep metaphor for what his dreams were about. Like, he, he mentioned, like, it was a bunch of cars. He couldn't get to them. I think that's, like... I think the cars, metaphorically speaking, in my mind are like Jane and, you know, his situation at hand. He really wants to get back to his family, but there's obstacles in his way that he can't move out of the way because he created his own obstacles. I'm, I might be thinking too deep into that. But again, they get into, you know, again, you got butt shots. You got, you know, again, they are they must be really comfortable with each other. Again, they're acting. Let's be honest. This is what actors do. But neither here nor there. We see them talking about that. Jonathan says that he uh, going back to his mother's relationship. He he feels like he's never been loved and he's never been able to give love. And that's where Mara says, well, I love you and I know you love me. We'll love each other forever. And, you know, we wrapped the episode up with Mara quoting the episode, which, again, was the name of the episode, which I believe the title of the episode and the quote that she said, I haven't seen the original scenes of marriage, but I think that's a line from that series. Let me know if I'm wrong or if that's from another movie, but I think that's for like a quote from the original uh, scene from a marriage. But wrapping it up, we didn't get our behind the scenes at the beginning, but this time we get at the end as both actors are robing it up, laughing, smiling, hugging each other. They make their way into their separate, um, you know, fitting rooms. And, you know, overall, I thought this was a really good episode. Again, it posed a lot of good questions about it again. Staying together because of the kids. How do you feel about your first love? The selfishness of these characters at the end of the day as far as Jonathan having an affair on his wife and obviously Mary knowing about this and her now being alone. But is she being alone because she's waiting for Jonathan to be free? And is Jonathan now kind of living a, you know two separate lives? I, I'm the, the husband, father of this new baby. I'm still a father to my child with Ava uh, and Mara and who knows? You know, this is the last time we're going to see these characters. I'm just curious, and I want to know in the comments, because he even says in this episode, I think that we're going to probably break up inevitably, which I think is sooner rather than later, once, you know, she probably finds out that her husband's cheating on her. I'm referring to uh, Jane. Do you all think, again, this is obviously they're not going to do a season two, do you think Mara and Jonathan will inevitably find their way back together?
My personal answer, I think so, but I want to know yours in the comments below. But overall, as far as this series goes, this was incredible. This was a, as they say, two of the fronts of acting between Oscar Isaac and Jessica Chastain. I felt like there was just so many times when I didn't see them incredible. Like, I didn't see the actors. I saw Jonathan. I saw Mara. That's how, like, engaged, how riveting, how, like, like locked in I was to these actors and I thought they gave it their all uh you know I think of last week's fight scene like that I feel like they really did throw blows just the method acting just because they were so invested in their roles I thought that the conversations that this show brought up in regards to again relationships are tough you know love is tough uh breaking up is tough divorces are tough uh but also within love there's happiness there's joy there's memories there's just a lot of great things to be said but at the same time there's a lot of stuff that can be very detrimental to you as an individual because of as this show posed the dependency of a relationship the dependency of someone someone making you happy but you're not happy with yourself right so all of the little, little conversations we had in the last five weeks have been incredible again i thought the direction was great uh i, I always appreciate a great director knows that he has great talent so he doesn't have to do too much i thought the director did a good job of just setting the scene setting the mood great dialogue and, and intense moments uh you were really tea filled drama moments i thought that was great the cinematography the score uh not you know wasn't a Hans Zimmer type of score, but it was very noticeable, kind of put you in the mood. I thought that that was great. And again, I, I've just really enjoyed this journey with you all uh, to get to this point. It's been an incredible five weeks. I always love what HBO has to offer. Again, I love me a Netflix and a HBO or a Hulu. Amazon, you know, all those great Disney Plus, great streaming services, but HBO to me still is like the, the king of the hill when it comes to like limited series, mini series, character development. Like they, they, they're still the king of the hill in regards to like great content. So with that kind of brings me to what's next on Movie Files? What's the next HBO show we're going to cover where I'm happy to announce? And this is one of my favorite shows on television now. I've, I've never covered it on this channel before, but we're going to change that because my next HBO series review will be for Secession Season 3, which will be premiering next week. And I have the first episode that I'll be watching, and I'm going to be reviewing it every single week. If you all don't know, because I, like I said, I've never covered on the show this channel before. Secession is one of my favorite shows on television right now, and I've, I've been, the last couple weekends, I've been binging all of season one, I have a couple, as I'm recording this, I have a couple more episodes left in season two, uh, just to revisit it, for I can just get ready to get back into the, you know, <laughs> Logan, and the, and the Roy family, and Kendall, and Siobhan, I, I love that show, and I'm gonna, I'm so excited to break it down for you all on a weekly basis, so mark your calendar next Sunday, if you watch Secession, if you don't, you should get up on it. Binge it for you can catch up because we're going to be breaking it down every single Sunday here on Movie Files. So look, before I head out again, I got to thank you all for the support, uh, for watching these videos, liking them, sharing them, commenting, sharing personal stories. It means a lot to me and I really appreciate every single one of you all. So before you leave, make sure to like the video, share the video, leave your thoughts in the comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the bell. That way you don't miss any more other content. Hope you enjoyed this review. Again, we'll see you next week for Secession. Now, of course, I have other reviews that I do throughout the week, but again, I hope you all are staying safe. As you you can see on the screen now subscribe check out the other content we'll see you in the next video